In today's show, we're gonna talk about the Power Apps user function. We're gonna use it to pull the user's full name, their email address, even their image. We're gonna talk about how I use it for logging or for how you might use it to security trim or hide things on the screen. And then at the end, we're also gonna talk about the Office 365 user connector because it's a nice alternative that takes a little more work but can be a little better function as well. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to look at the Power Apps user function. All right, the Power Apps user function, I use it for several different things. Mostly, though, it's to get information back from the user, duh. But, you know, there's things we already know about them, like email address, their full name, uh, maybe even their image. And then I'll use that whether I use it to, like, hide a button on the screen. So that's what we'll do in the example. Or I'll use it for logging. So, like, if you're logging to a data source like Excel or SQL or something like that, and I want to say who made this edit, who added it. I don't want to ask the user who they are. We can find out who they are so we can get that information and write it without having them to do it. Sound pretty fun? So let's just jump over to my desktop, dive in, and let's see how I do. Over here on my desktop, I'm going to open this browser. So I've already logged into Power Apps, and we're going to create an app. So we're going to go Apps, Create an App, and then we'll use a tablet layout because it's always easier when I'm doing these type of things. And so then after a few seconds, we have a nice blank canvas here. So we'll skip out of this. All right, and so the first thing we want to do with the user function is just uh, return their name, right? And the way that we're going to do this, I'm going to insert a label. And this is a chance for me to remind you guys that labels are how I troubleshoot and learn and figure out all this stuff all the time, right? Just today in the forum, someone was showing this big giant formula, and in the middle of the formula, they needed to concatenate a string to make it say what they wanted. They were having a real hard time making it work, and they kept doing it within the context of the formula. Too many moving parts for me. If I was that guy, I would have taken, went over here, created a label, did all my concatenation, got the string to look just the way I wanted, and then cut and paste that into the formula because I would know that was a good entity at that point. So that's my advice to you, labels are your friend. So what we're gonna do here is we're just going to type in user, and just like that. So that is the user function, as a built-in function of Power Apps. And if you do a dot, you're gonna see the different things it off offers you. So an email address, the full name, and the uh, image. And so what we can do is user.fullName, wait a second, and it's going to say Shane Young, right? And so we know that we can make our app a little nicer, you know, all of our apps nicer, right? By doing a little something like this, right? Welcome to, and then we'll close it like that, and we'll do an uh, ampersand, which means concatenate, right? And so then now it says, welcome to Shane Young, right? Probably wouldn't say welcome to it, probably just say welcome. Let's make this better English. English was not my strong suit, though. So now it says, welcome Shane Young, right? So you could add that to the loading screen of your app. Gives it a little, little flair, makes it seem a little nicer. So that's one of the ways I use it. Let's do another label on here. A much more common way that I use this uh, particular function is the fact that it knows their email address, right? Because everyone to use your Power App had to log into Office 365 and Power Apps, so the app always knows this information about you. So Shane at Power Apps 911. This is, should be used all the time. Quit asking users for emails. I see it all the time. They're like, enter your email. No, you know their email. Don't bother them with putting in information that you already know. So I could take and use this. I might put this in a uh, some type of screen thing. But more typically what I will do with this is if I'm sending an email, right? I've got the uh, email already there. So if I need, if I need a cop, send them a carbon copy, right? I have a little checkbox on my screen. It says send a carbon copy. If they check that box, then I set the CC email address to be their email address. No questions asked. But the most common way that I'm using this in apps today is a little bit of security, right? So if I drag a button on the screen, and we'll call this our secret button, you know, maybe maybe we should make it red or something just to you know show that it's scary. Ooh, it's the big red button, right? The launch button. But with this button, what I will do a lot of times is I will say do 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 visible. And then I can say if um, user boom boom dot email right, which we've already figured out, we already know it works. Equals Chewy at Power Apps nine one one. So if if Chewy's the user right, he's the one who has access to secret stuff. We'll make this true, and if it's not Chewy, we'll make it false. Oh, I missed a. Parenthesis right here, or a quote, a quote, I missed a quote. 
So boom, you can see this button now disappears for me because my email address is not Chewy at Power Apps 911. And so what we do here, right, is this is this is truly security, right? Because what happens? That button will not show up for anyone other than Chewy in this case. Um, and if that button, for example, navigated you to the manager only information screen, you wouldn't be able to get to the manager only information screen because the only way people can get to screens in Power Apps is if you give them a way to get to it. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind that, you know, it's, it's not security by obscurity, it's security by they're not that person. There's no way to manually navigate to a Power App screen. So we use this all the time. Um, you know, one of the solutions I talked to a customer earlier this week is we were going to have like a list of information. So a SharePoint list or, you know, Excel, SQL somewhere, but a list of all the email addresses of people that were allowed to see a certain tab in his app. And so then we're just going to have the, you know, an if function. If you know, user was found in that uh, list of email addresses, boom. And what I found is that using the email address is a lot more consistent than names where I might be Shane Young, I might be Shane, um, you know, Shane Y Young, you know, my middle initial or something like that. So for me, matching email or email addresses is a much easier match to do. But anyway, this is a very common scenario for me. Okay. So the third way we can use this guy, um, and I have not done this actually for a customer, but it, it works, right? So we do insert a media. And so if we put this down here, whoop, um, what we're gonna do here for image then is we're just gonna say user boom, boom dot image. Oh, I messed that up, sorry. Let's try this again. User dot image, press the down arrow. And so then here in a second, you should see my beautiful face. Woo, there I am. So this is a way you can add the user's image to the screen, right? If you want to have some type of, you know, make it a little more personalized, right? Younger people, especially, they like those more personalized apps. It feels, feels more important to me if I'm there. But I will warn you that user.image that way, it doesn't always work. Um, and I don't have a good explanation for why, you know, Sometimes it doesn't work, um, or sometimes it's really slow to get the uh, updated images, things like that. So generally speaking, I have, uh, you know, I've helped some people troubleshoot these problems. Like I said, I haven't done this in an actual app, but for people I've helped with the problem, they don't end up using the user image. They end up using a different connector. And so we're going to go over here to view data sources. We're going to add a data source. We're going to do a new connection. And so then down here is going to be well, all the way at the bottom, goodness gracious, N-O, there we go, Office 365 users. So if you add this data connection, we'll say create, it's not a data connection in the same way that like Word and Excel is. You can't, uh, you know, grab this information and just straight up put it in a, uh, a gallery and start taking advantage of it. But it gives us new functions the same way that our Outlook email one works, right? It gave us new functions that we could take advantage of. Now keep in mind that when I add this data source though, this is another data source that when your users uh, use the app for the first time, they're gonna have to agree to allow uh, their connection through. So it does have some minuses. But now that we've added that, let me close that out. Let's add another image. So insert media image. And so we'll put it kind of over here. We'll make it a little bigger also. Oh, I'm terrible at this. But so then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this formula. So Office 365 users, right? That's the function. We're gonna say get the user photo, and then weirdly enough, we're gonna use our user function to get the email address to look up the user photo, right? Because we have to have context. We have to know whose user photo we wanna get out of here. So uh, there's that. And that's, um, let's add another label real quick. Another label right here. Whoop, grab it over here. Yeah, and so this is a fun little function. What I'd recommend you do is put in Office 365 users, do your dot, and then scroll through here and get some ideas. So for example, who are the direct reports? Managers, their profile, trending docs, relevant people, search for a user, right? You wanna look up and make sure a user exists in your AD, there you go. Um, update photos, update their profiles, user photo, user photo metadata. I mean, there's all types of things, user photo v2, there's a lot of different things, and we're not gonna explore that, we're not gonna unpack that one today, but I wanted you to know that if you're finding the user one that is so far worked in every scenario that I've needed, if you find that one limited, I want you to understand there was another one out there, okay? So real quick though, I wanna save our app, right? We're almost done, I promise. File, 
we'll say save, we'll call this um, app video, like so. We'll say save, and then we're gonna share this app, and the share app actually showed up over here on the other screen, so then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, share it with Chewy, all right? So Chewy the dog, we're going to say Chewy can use it, so save. All right, so the permissions were updated, so if we switch this other browser, this is Chewy's browser, all right? My dog has his own browser, doesn't yours. If we give it just a second, we can see that uh, Shane shared this app with you. Also, Chewy's logged into Power Apps over here, and so momentarily, at some point, the notifications will update, and it'll say this new app has been shared with you. It's uh, it's not fast enough for me, so I'm not going to wait on it, but that will show up also. So we're going to say use this app, and so then we will jump into the app. You can see here's the permissions thing. So yep, Chewy says allow that to happen. And so what we should see is there is our welcome Chewy Young, Chewy at Power Apps 911. This image did not work, right? This is the one that we did in the user uh, parentheses format, but this Office 365 connector one did. So kind of worth noting. And then I would be a little annoyed that it looks like Chewy's email address did not come through. So let's grab this. I bet I just have a typo over in the original app. Switch over here. We'll go back. Boom, right here. And so let's grab our button. And yep, so we did not capitalize Chewy at PowerApps911.com correctly. So now when we save and republish, Chewy would see the secret button. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, Shane, that's really annoying. I don't want to get case and all that correct. So what you could do is there is a function. And so the, there's a function called lower, right? So what we could have done was we could have said, all right, run the lower function on his email address. And then if we would just type all, and then when we type all this in a lowercase, right, we would know that they would always match. So you wouldn't have to worry about case. So I probably should have done that the first time, but lower is a handy function because that should work. So let's just test to make sure I'm correct. So we'll say file, we'll say save. And one of the things I always do, I actually meant to do, let's go over here and let's just add another label on the screen real quick. And so we'll call it V2. I always do this to make sure that I know that I've gotten to the version that I saved. It shouldn't be that scary, but I like uh, visual indicators that it's actually not caching anything and making me really frustrated it's not working. So we'll publish this out to Chewy. We will switch over to Chewy and we'll hit refresh and we'll see that it's still not there. So we'll check, oh look, there's our notifications came through. You can see the little bell sign. But let's go back over here and let's open the app again. Let's use the app again. There you go, so V2, see that's why I put the V2 on there. That way when I did the refresh, I get frustrated it didn't work. But now you can see that thanks to lower and converting it all to lower, then the secret button shows up. So, all right, so I realized this was kind of a random video, but the user function's very helpful, so I just wanted to kind of walk you through, you know, the little, the little weird idiosyncrasies, easy for me to say, of the function, and just make sure you kind of had a feel for how it worked, where I was using it, and what your other options were. So hopefully you like this. If you think these uh, ideas are just short little di dives on functions are great, let me know. Leave me comments below. If you hate the idea that I did this random video that just kind of showed you a bunch of stuff that wasn't perfect, then tell me below also. All right, thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you want to work together, need some help getting your power apps going, Hit me up at PowerApps911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is, check out the PowerApps playlist over here and you know enjoy that. All right, thanks and have a great day.